Hey guys, what's up? It's Rose Malay, and over the past few days, I've seen a um, decent amount of videos from large creators about Eugenia Cooney, and it's really got me thinking, like, at this point, you know, people I feel like have tried everything, and it hasn't been helping, and it kind of just got me thinking. Like, I had purposely been avoiding this topic for years, but I decided I was just gonna watch a bunch of videos about it, try to educate myself on the situation, and honestly, I'm kind of ashamed at what this community has become. I feel like everyone thinks that they're helping, but it kind of feels counterintuitive. And I feel like a lot of times people put their own self-interest in front of what actually is good for her. Like there's these YouTubers who make like 10 plus videos about Eugenia Cooney with this weird mindset that like, oh, maybe if this gets a million views, something will be done. <laughs> This person's going in. Holy. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, take your shots, guys. That's the thing. Like, this isn't new for Eugenia. People have been trying to help her for some time. And then there was that moment where Onision was trying to step in. And guys, he is like, at one point, she, like, someone compared me to him. And I was like, oh no. Like, I, that's my nightmare because that guy is terrible and bad news. I'm so sick and tired of this mindset. Like sensationalizing this story helps literally no one. It's the same kind of mindset Chris Hansen had when he was making his investigation discovery Omision documentary. And we all know how that went, right? It was so clearly not done to bring any sort of attention to what's going on. This is a 99% dislike ratio. You know, and Chris Hansen said that more eyes on the story would lead to justice. He lied. He just wanted money and relevance. He exploited the victims and their stories for their own personal gain. He traumatized them on a large scale. So I guess the question that I want to ask here is what difference does it make here? I'll speak on my experience. I always knew that I had a disorder. I look in the mirror and I see a huge person. So I think my question for you is like, was it hard and is it hard right now to like literally really talk about it? Because I feel like even now it's a little bit like, I don't want to push you too far, but you know, I think, you know. And maybe you think that I'm a hypocrite because yeah, at the end of the day, I am making a video on her like everyone else's, I guess. And I debated whether I should or not because am I making this video also contributing to the problem? But at the same time, I'm hoping that like some of these people who make all of these videos speculating on every single little bit of her life who don't even know her can like see this and maybe reevaluate like what they're doing. Like the thing you don't have to understand is like she has a mental illness. Like you can tell her that she's too skinny a million times, she's still gonna be happy with her body. So I see all of these people who like spam her live streams and like constantly, I've seen some of these clips. I mean, they go on for hours and it's literally nothing but people donating, telling her to get better, to gain weight for their own personal satisfaction of, I need answers for this, this, this. And it's just like, if thousands of people have done what you've done before, why do you think that what you say, what you ask will be any different, right? People saying things like, you need to get help, you look really sick, you are going to die. Saying things like this is not going to help her. She is only going to look at that as fuel and it's going to push her deeper and deeper into this ED. It's like, I also admire that people genuinely care and want her to get better. But at the same time, it's like, you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. And honestly, maybe bringing up the fact that she could die, have you ever considered that that's triggering to her? And maybe when she just wants to, you know, do normal things, she shouldn't be constantly bombarded with that. Is that an extreme opinion? Am I wrong about that? If you are personally in her life and you are in the position where you can do something that can help her, that's one thing. But if you're just some random person online and you think that spam donating, telling her to gain weight, telling her that she's going to die is going to do anything, maybe reevaluate your position and maybe realize that you aren't the savior that you think you are. <laughs> like, I know you have good intention, but you need to accept that like some things are out of your control. What she chooses to do with her body, at the end of the day, it's her decision and no one else's. Another thing that I have issue with is people who, I guess, blame Eugenia for the way that other people view her content. And it's like, 
I understand that her videos, you know, she goes out of her way to show her whole body and maybe that's not the best idea. But at the same time, she's not telling people to idealize her. She's not telling people that they should look like her. And I'm not naive. I know that regardless of what she says, there are gonna be young girls and people out there who want to look like her. That is inevitable and it's going to happen. But why are we blaming her for that? Is I guess what I'm saying. Like, when did we get to the point where we decided to start blaming women for the way that society views our bodies? Like, I don't understand how it's her fault that other people view her that way. That's literally the same kind of mindset of telling young girls who are in middle school that are exposing their shoulders that they are distracting the boys and they have to change their clothes. When did you all decide that the way that a woman expresses herself and shows her body on the internet is problematic and that it's her fault the way that other people view her. Like, I thought we were in agreement that that was wrong, and then all of a sudden y'all just change your perspectives really quickly. Someone explain that to me, please. <laughs> And it's like, I'm not even in denial. Like I totally believe that there are young girls who view her as an aspiration. And I totally believe that that's dangerous. And I don't know what the solution to that is because it's a complicated problem, right? Like why do we always have to put the blame on women's bodies? <laughs> she's just living her life and she's not telling anyone to look like her. I'm not denying that surely some people will view her body as an inspiration, but what's the alternative to that? Do we really want to ban someone off of the internet for something that's of no fault of their own? Do we really want to send the message that someone just being themselves and showcasing their body is something that should be hidden, that certain types of bodies should not be allowed to have a presence on the internet? I don't like that message. And the thing that gets me the most about this whole thing is how everyone treats her body like this big spectacle. And I feel like people just ignore who she is as a person. Like some people mention her personality, but literally she is so much more than her body. And I feel like everyone is just objectifying her for her body. It's just a lot of hypocrisy to me. From the little I know about her, she seems like the sweetest, nicest person. Clearly she has a problem, but I see her get like so much hate and I'm just sitting here thinking. Mass dislike all of her videos, spamming the comments, talking about her weight all the time. That's not helping her and it's not healthy. Like it's weird because these same people will go to people who are like 300, 400 pounds and they will say these exact same things. Like they'll have body positivity. They'll say like, yeah, you should lose weight and be healthy, but maybe don't constantly bombard the person about their weight, about their body, even though it's dangerous and could lead to health issues. But when it's a skinny person, it's like the mindset is a complete 180. It just feels hypocritical and it feels off to me. Like the way that the internet is treating her just isn't right. And I know that there's like some things that people criticize her for and I completely understand that. Like the situation with her mods, which I found this amazing clip that kind of explains her mindset about it. These mods, even though they were bad people, were nice to her. Therefore, she thought of them as good people. But she does not understand when situations are bad or when they're inappropriate. At a friend's birthday party that she was at, we sat down with her and realized that there was a man harassing her, being inappropriate towards her, a fan, who had asked for her phone number and because she didn't want to be rude, she gave him her phone number. People are judging her very harshly, but I do know her enough to say that I don't think that was malicious. And it's like, I understand that she shouldn't have let dangerous people in those situations, but like seeing that clip really spoke to me because I'm the same way about those things. And I feel like I get misunderstood a lot for that too. Like, you know, I'm kind of a pushover. If someone is being mean to me or is taking advantage of me, I still try to be nice to them as well. Like, and I wouldn't want her to be attacked for something that she feels is just her trying to respect people. Like, I know it's not the healthiest thing in the world to do, trust me, but it's just who she is as a person. She can't really help or control that. Anyway, speaking of Jaclyn Hill, honestly, I know that she thinks that what she did was good. And honestly, maybe it was, Probably. If we didn't do that intervention, she would have died. And I know that that is a harsh thing to say, but I fully believe it. I mean, we saw what happened afterwards and that she did recover for a bit. So probably what she did did help, but I do have to question, like there was a very questionable morals and ethics of what she did. It was absolutely the right thing, but I still kind of feel iffy about it. I don't know. <laughs>
But at the same time, I don't know the situation. I don't want to speculate, right? But it's also very clear to me that she absolutely betrayed Eugenia's trust, right? Like, put yourself in her shoes for a second. Like, she thinks that she's just going out with her friends, but instead she's being sent to a hospital by that friend involuntarily. And no matter what she does, she can't escape it. And here's the thing, right? And I understand that, you know, because this could save her life, that it's absolutely the correct thing to do. But man, I mean, being betrayed by someone you're so close with, I mean, that's gotta cause some serious like mental damage. I know personally, I've had the police called on me once before because I was suicidal and I was taken to a mental health facility against my will. It was a horrible experience. I mean, I think people who call and think that they're sending help don't understand what these places are like. In my case, it was just severely underfunded. I had to basically sleep with a bunch of 50 year old men for a day. And I had to basically sit there for 24 hours. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't eat anything while I was there because they served food, but the food was so horrible. I just passed and I said, I'll let myself starve um, until I leave this place, which thankfully was like only a day. But I literally sat in this like bed. It was like this huge room, which was literally nothing nothing but like these tiny beds. And it was just like 50 beds spread across a room. There's one bathroom that's absolutely disgusting. There's a TV that's on with no sound. And I asked, you know, if I could leave and they said no. They said like, there's this paper that I could sign to leave early. Like legally I had the right to sign that paper, but also legally they said they didn't have to give people the paper. It was, it was so weird. And about a day later, I finally spoke to someone for like 15 minutes because the entire day, this person was constantly going around talking to people and we just had to wait our turn in line. We couldn't leave. We were stuck in this boring, like a place that was so hidden. It wasn't even on like Google maps. Like when I finally got to my turn, I spoke to the person for like five minutes and then they let me go. But Honestly, I mean, that experience, I just have so much trauma from that experience. And it's like, I don't think that it helped me, right? Obviously every person's situation is different. And in Eugenia's case, you know, maybe she was also traumatized. I mean, like I said, it's a different place probably, right? I have to imagine that she was taken somewhere you know, more specific to her own struggles. But I can say personally with my own experience that being there did not help me one bit. Right, like obviously I'm not suicidal like I used to be, but it's in no turn because of that place. Like all those places do is just give people PTSD because you're just shocked that, you know, a government can allow a place like that to exist. The conditions there are so awful. You, you have to be there to understand, right? Now, maybe you're thinking while hearing this that I simply just don't care and I don't wanna see her improve. That's not true. And I think that if you feel that way, you're probably missing the point of what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is that sending all of these negative comments towards her isn't helping anyone like it's been clear to me no matter what people say to her online it doesn't affect her behavior so if people can say whatever they want and she's still gonna live her life and do what she wants why can't we just have the simple courtesy of just like being nice to her because if she is legitimately dying like how do you want her to spend the last few years of her life being tormented by all these people online commenting and critiquing her or do we want people to accept her and show her unconditional support wanting her to get better but not bombarding her with these hate comments, not dislike bombing all of her videos, not constantly bombarding her on all of her live streams about her weight, and just leave that to the people in her life that can actually do something about it. How about let's not make 20 videos speculating about her situation and let's not turn it into this sensationalized story. Let's treat her as a person. Let's not have this mindset of go checking back on our channel every few months to see how skinny she is because there's a lot of really sick people who like seem to like be really excited to see someone get closer and closer to death. It's just this weird fascination and I can't help but think that it's extremely unhealthy and people just need to like stop. And this last point is probably gonna be hard for you to hear because I know a lot of you genuinely care about her, but it's something that you need to hear. There is nothing you can do to help Eugenia Cooney. And you need to accept that. You need to move on with your life, realize that this is a stranger on the internet with her own problems and no amount of commenting, no amount of donations is going to change how she feels about herself. You can lift that weight off of your shoulder because I think that's the healthiest thing to do for everyone involved. And if you're watching her videos, 
saying to yourself out of pure curiosity, is she getting skinnier? Is she gonna die? You are part of the problem. Maybe don't obsess about this girl. Maybe focus on your own issues. Because at the end of the day, Eugenia doesn't see anything wrong with her own body. And as long as that is the case, she will continue to stay the way that she currently is, regardless of what other people say. I'm transgender. A lot of religious people think that they're helping me. You know, I've had cousins message me telling me that God loves me and I should stop being trans. I've had, you know, people on the internet tell me that um, what I'm doing is unnatural and I need to stop. And it's like, in their minds, they think that they're being compassionate. They think that they're helping me. But at the end of the day, that's not gonna change how I feel about myself and it never will. Now granted, before I get a lot of upset comments, Obviously, I know it's not the best comparison in the world because obviously there's absolutely nothing wrong with being trans and being trans isn't going to kill me. The point I was trying to make is that when someone feels so strongly about their body and that they're happy with it themselves, there's nothing really that anyone else can do with that except for her. And I understand showing concern for her, but this is just excessive and counterproductive. If she can come to her own terms and realize that what she's doing with her body isn't healthy and she decides that she needs to fight to stay alive, you know, obviously that would be amazing. But that's her decision to make. And no matter how much anyone else tries, nobody can do anything about it except for Eugenia and maybe her parents. At the end of the day, this isn't your situation to solve. This is someone's life we're talking about, right? This isn't, you know, fun and games. This isn't drama. Someone's dying. Personally, I feel that she deserves love and acceptance no matter what her body looks like. And I think that that's the message we should be sending her because seeing her like ratio be like 100%, 99%, 98% when she gains weight and like 10, 20% when it's like she loses weight, I think that sends her the message that like, you know, no one gets her and no one supports her and it causes her to clued to those habits even more. Whereas I feel like if we showed her unconditional love and acceptance and sent her the message that, hey, no matter what your body looks like, you are worthy, you are loved, you know? Obviously it's not healthy, but we can still be supportive of her. I feel like that would help more. <laughs> or of course we could just like leave her alone and realize that, hey, you know, this is her life and maybe we shouldn't be obsessing about what this girl does with her own body. Of course I want her to be healthy, but at the end of the day, that's a decision that only she can make. And we shouldn't be shaming her for her body and the way that it looks down. And that's what I hope you can take away from this video. But anyway, now that I'm done talking about Eugenia, I kind of want to talk about my own health and weight issues. Because I mentioned in my community tab a few weeks ago that I was going to make a video just on my weight anyways. But I kind of wanted to relate it to the situation. I also want people to know that I'm not just like some random person talking about this. Like, I've had my own issues with weight myself. Obviously not to the extent that she does. And I don't even want to come off as like, you know, saying that. Because I can't relate to, you know, what she's dealing with especially the severity of it. But I also have very unhealthy eating habits and I've been on both sides of it. So I kind of wanted to share my story and kind of get your guys' opinions on it. And I also want to point out that I feel like I have a unique perspective when it comes to weight because I've been on both sides, right? In 2017, I was at the cusp of being obese. I was very unhappy with my body. It was a very unhealthy time for me. And it really scares me to look back and look at those pictures because at the time, I remember looking at my body and thinking that it wasn't that bad. Like, yeah, I'm a little overweight, sure. But it's like, you know, I can't really tell. I, I'm, I look okay. But in retrospect, it was just clear that I, you know, had a problem, but thankfully I did fix the problem, but it's weird because it's like I was still eating unhealthily. I was just eating unhealthily in a different way. It was so weird. So those pictures I just showed you were from the summer of 2017. These pictures are from the summer of 2019. And clearly you can see in just two years, a huge difference, right? I lost 85 pounds within these two years. And also keep in mind that I'm two inches taller in these new pictures than I was in these other pictures. So I lost 85 pounds despite the fact that I gained two inches of height. Look at my face, look at my freaking face. It was a huge difference in a relatively short period of time. And I remember I would constantly check my weight, I would constantly check my BMI, and I just wanted that number to keep going down, even to at a point where I was clearly healthy and I didn't really need to be making any more changes. I remember when I was about at my lowest, I mean, when these pictures were taken, I was like a few pounds away from being underweight. And maybe you can see that in some of these pictures. Obviously it's nowhere near as bad as what Eugenia is. Like, 
don't get me wrong, I am very healthy in these pictures. And honestly, that's the weight that I wish I was now. <laughs> But I guess I didn't realize just how skinny I was until looking at these pictures just now in retrospect. I remember calculating my BMI online and thinking that, you know, I was only a few pounds away from being underweight and I took that as I still got a few more pounds that I can lose. And I remember thinking, well, there's models that like are my height and they weigh a bit less so I can still lose weight and be as skinny as those people are. I remember like when I looked like this in this picture, I said to myself, I still got 15 pounds to lose. That's what I told myself. And of course my mom was like telling me like, um, you're fine, you're okay. And I was just thinking to myself like, okay, but what if I was skinnier? And it's such a toxic mindset, right? When I look like this, it was a toxic mindset of dismissing the problem and telling myself that I looked okay and that, you know, I wasn't really that overweight and I was just overlooking my health. And when I was at this weight, it was also a toxic mindset of telling myself that it wasn't enough and that I needed to lose more. And I really didn't. I was skinny enough. Thankfully, I never really got to that point where I was like too skinny. Uh, I was able to pull myself out of it, but I was also ashamed of myself for doing that. Like I remember when I gained a few pounds after that point, I was just so ashamed of myself. It was bad, even though I was perfectly healthy at the time and I really had no reason to feel that way. And you know, I've gained a lot of the weight back as I'm sure you can tell and there's a lot of shame in there. I don't know if you can see, but I am practically obese again and that terrifies me. And then I'm trying to lose weight and even now, now, I have these really unhealthy eating habits. God, I'm not proud of myself, but I guess I should admit it, right? Like talking about my own struggles. I've literally had days where I've had like one big meal and then haven't had anything else to eat for like 12 hours. And I thought to myself, like, this is the way that I need to lose weight. This is how I'm gonna get back to what I used to look like. And there are literally days where I would just like grab a few snacks, like a bit of candy. And I'd say to myself, oh, this is my meal. I was actually um, on a call with um, one of my friends recently. And I think it concerned them because I was just eating while we were talking and I was like on FaceTime or whatever. And my meal was just like a few Oreos, like I think four Oreos and like a handful of Pringles. And I said, oh yeah, this is my brunch. So I mean, I need to lose weight, obviously. I'm at a weight where it's like, I'm practically obese and I need to work on that because at the, at the point where I am, I just need to get healthier. I'm not denying the problem, but I could go about it in a much healthier way than I currently do. Now, obviously that's not to say, like my situation is obviously very different from Eugenia's and I'm not claiming to understand what she's going through because I don't. I'm just relating it to my own experiences so you can understand that I have a little bit of experience of what it's like. Not the same, but a little bit, you know? And obviously if anyone has advice to me on how to lose like 50 pounds, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> and you should let me know in the comment section below. So quick update, it's been a few days since I filmed the Eugene Yukuti video and I've lost a bit of weight. <laughs> and I definitely think that the video has inspired me to do so. You know, maybe I'm just proving their points that isn't exactly the best influence. Like I've been limiting my meals to like a thousand, twelve hundred calories a day, and I'm six one, but I also need to lose the weight. I don't know. I just wanted to add this at the end because, I mean, that's just my own personal experience. Do any of you guys notice that I'm like? thinner already because I don't think there's like enough of a difference to tell. Maybe there is. I don't know. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Chris Hansen here. I have a message for you, Rose Mullet. Thank you for the wonderful entertainment you have provided us with. I'm going to need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rose Mullet. Morning very sad. Why don't I have 1 million subs yet? This isn't fair. Give me subs. If you wanted sandwiches you could have just asked. Or you could subscribe to Rose Moulet's channel. I think I'll take the sandwiches.